Amen. Wasn't that wonderful? Aren't they handsome and pretty? <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. This is not a show, but to the honor and glory of God. Amen. Amen. This morning, you've, or maybe since last night when you got the bulletin, you know that we were, were going to Mark chapter 12. You may be thinking, oh, a sermon because our offerings are low. No. No, the, we are going to Mark chapter 12 and look at the story of the widow. But from a different perspective, from a perspective of motivation, of motivation, what, what motivated you to come today to church? What motivates you to serve the church? What motivates you to give to the church? There are some people that like to be recognized when they come or when they give. Does motivation make a difference when you come to worship, when you give, when you serve? Or is it just about just coming here? Well, we're going to learn from the story of here in Mark chapter 12, uh, verse 41. Hopefully your Bibles are still open there. We're going to learn some points from the life of this widow of how to worship, how to come to church, how to give, how to serve, how to serve. You can also find this story in Luke chapter 21, verse 1 through 4, but we're going to read it here from Mark chapter 12, verse 41 through 44. I want to thank Jessica for reading it for us. But here it says, Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury, and many who were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which make a quadrant. So he called his disciples to him and said to them, notice, it drew Jesus' attention that he called his disciples, and what did he say? Surely I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury, for they all put in out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had her whole livelihood. That's important. Her whole life. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I ask for your Holy Spirit that he may be here and open our hearts and open our minds and hear your voice in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 What can we learn about this particular widow in Mark that Jesus wanted his disciples to pay attention to? He was watching as people came and would give offerings, and he, he called to the disciples' attention, check that out. Look, look what she's doing. Look how she is doing. One thing that, that uh, we can learn from her, besides the obvious that she is a widow, of implying that she was married at one time, the Bible does, does not say how long she was married, um, if she had much of an, of an inheritance or children to watch after her. We don't know. It just says that she is a widow and that she is poor. But one thing we see is that where is she? In the temple. She's in the temple giving an offering. She's in the temple giving an offering. Even though she is poor and alone, she's at church. Amen. She's at church. Does that describe you and me? She's not complaining or concerned about other things. Maybe that now it's harder since, since her husband is no, is no longer with her. But she still believes in the church and she still is attending the temple. And is faithful in attending the temple. And is faithful attending church. Does that describe us? Does that describe you and me? <clears throat> Not only is it obvious that she's attending, but the main, ops, the, the main point that we can see is that she gives. 
She gives because she believes in the mission of the temple, in the mission of the church. Does that describe you and myself? Even though times are rough, she believes in giving. She wasn't one of these that says, you know, well, God understands if this month I can't give, but next month I'll try to give. She gave faithfully. And the fact that she gave all, as Jesus pointed out, talks about her faith. The fact that she gave everything, all, talks about her faith, that she trusted that God would supply her needs the next day or that next week. She may not have known where maybe the food was going to come from or the rent or, or things, but she says, I need to give to God, and God will sustain me and supply my needs. Does that describe you and me? I'm trying to, to, to reach into your heart as we see from this widow these valuable lessons of, of what motivates us to come to church, to give, to serve. We see there in Mark 12, verse 41, on how she gave, impressed the Lord. And this is where, where I'm going to spend most of the time, there in verse 41, where it says, Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money. How the people put money. Just looking at a little bit of context, this is the temple that Herod the Great had built. This was the temple that... Uh, was corrupt. If you remember, Jesus turned the tables in this temple. Why did he turn the tables and let go of the animals and was upset with the robbery that was happening in the temple? This was that same temple that Herod had built. And yet, the priests, the temple are corrupt. But God is not impressed with how much we give but he is impressed on how we give. Notice the text. It says, He sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury. Not what they put or when they put it, but how they put the money. God is not impressed that you come to church. Anyone can drag you out of bed and put you in a pew here. But how do you come to church? What is the spirit that you come to church? What is the attitude? What motivates you to come to church? And Jesus wanted the disciples to look at this widow and see, look how she's putting money. Look how she's coming. Even with the corrupt temple and priest, Jesus was watching how people came into the temple, and Jesus is watching on how people come into church. How, what motivates us to come to church. How do you come to church? What is the spirit that brings you, that brings me to, to church? You see, you can't impress God with our clothes or with our money. Do you come to be religious or do you come because you want to be recreated, a new creature? As 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. Do we come because we want to be renewed, forgiven, restored? Or do we come because we just want to be religious? This widow is being noticed by heaven. This widow was noticed by heaven. And many that come to church want to be noticed or they like to notice others. Sometimes they like to notice what others are wearing, what others are eating, what others are doing. Why, oh, why haven't your spouse come? Where is he? Instead of their motive on coming to be with Jesus. What is the motive? What is the spirit, the attitude that you come to church? And so I want to draw your attention again there to the, the meditation to desire of, of ages from uh, page 615 regarding this particular passage in Scripture. The testimony of Jesus says, it is the motive that gives character to what? 
to our acts. It is the motive that gives character to our acts, stamping them with, with, ignom with ignominy with, or with high moral worth. Ignominy, with our high moral worth. Not the great things which every eye sees and every tongue praises does God account most precious. Did you, rec did you catch that? Not the great things which every eye sees or every tongue praises does God account most precious. The little duties, cheerfully done, the little gifts which make no show and which to human eyes may appear worthless often stand what? What church? Highest in his sight. It did here. Jesus called the attention to the disciples. Check that out. That is worth paying attention to. A heart of faith and love is dearer to God than the most costly gift. The poor widow gave her living to do the little thing that she did. She deprived herself of food in order to give those, whom, those two mites to the cause she loved. Notice that. To the cause. What cause was that? The temple. The work of God. In spite of how the temple was and how it was run, she knew it was the Lord's temple. And she did it in faith, believing that her heavenly Father would not overlook her great need. It was this unselfish spirit and childlike faith that won the Savior's commendation. Amen. Amen. Open your Bibles to 1 Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 28, 1 Chronicles chapter 28, Chronicles is after 1 and 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles chapter 28, so as you're turning there, 1 Chronicles chapter 28, Jesus was watching and how they were giving, and he wanted his disciples to learn this. Because he knew that his disciples were going to begin the early church. And this was the type of Christians, of followers, that he wanted them to be as well. And for others to be. God wanted their worship to be more than just form and fashion. There's nothing wrong with form and fashion. And order. But worshiping and coming to church should be much more than that. First Chronicles, what chapter? What verse? Oh, I didn't say it, but you got it. It's in the bulletin. Very good. It says, here, here David is talking to his son. As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with what kind of heart? A loyal heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intent of the thoughts. God knows with what motive you come to church, with what motive you give, with what motive you serve. And here, God is reminding him, uh, reminding Solomon and us, serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind because God searches the hearts. He knows. He knows. So what motivates you to come? What motivates you to give? See, God knows if the amount that you give, if you're being honest. God knows if you're honest. God knows if, if you only give because you like the pastor or you like the service. See, God monitors the motive, not the money. He counts the commitment not really the coins. He reviews the, your reason and not your revenue, but your reasons for coming to church, to serving. We all know that giving, uh, offerings, and tithes are part of the Christian walk, are part of the church. And we are familiar with these texts. They're in your, they're in your bulletin, but I'll just br briefly mention them. They're in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 and 7, where Paul tells us not to give grudgingly because God loves a cheerful giver. 
Malachi chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, God requires tithe and making a distinction also between tithe and offering. Tithe never belongs in the offering. Tithe doesn't go to ministries, to CACS, to the Hope Clinic, to Amazing Facts. Tithe belongs to God and to His workers. Offering, you can spread it wherever you like. And Malachi there, Malachi in chapter 3, God is reminding us, will you rob God? And so there is a distinction between tithe and offerings. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, give God first. He requires our first fruits. And 1 Corinthians 4, verse 2, where God tells us to give consistently. Be faithful in your giving. Be faithful in your giving. And these, these texts about giving, we are familiar with. And I'm not asking you, oh, we need to give more. No. But what motivates you to give? What motivates you to come, to serve? What is that motivation? There is something deeper, and God is watching on how we give our motive. This, this widow, this particular widow, was not dumb. She knew that the temple was corrupt. She knew that the priests were corrupt. She had heard that they drag out Mary Magdalene ready to stone her. The same priest wanted to stone her, and she knew and had heard that some of those same priests had been with Mary Magdalene. If you want to know of a corrupt priest and temple and system, this was it. It was corrupt. And Jesus was trying... That's why Jesus said, your temple has left you. He tried to work to bring it on how God would have wanted his message, his people, his priests, but they would not listen. She knew all of this, but yet she still gave and she still came to church, friends. Hallelujah. Can the same be said about you and me? Do we still come to church? Do we still give when we see things in the church, in the organization that may not be right, that may be corrupt? She still gave and she still came. She recognized that her money wasn't hers. She recognized that coming to church wasn't based on others. And that's why I listened to here to the Second paragraph on the meditation from councils on stewardship. And I purposely put this here so if you want to take it home and read again and double check and highlight it in your book. Some have been dissatisfied and have said, I will not longer pay my tithes for I have no confidence in the way things are managed at the heart of the work. Does that sound familiar? Yes, it does. That's, that's unfamiliar. I've heard that more than I should have heard it. But notice, she continues saying, But will you rob God because you think the management of the work is not right? Notice, will you rob the church? No. The conference? No. The pastor? Who are you robbing? You're robbing God. But will you rob God because you think the management of the work is not right? Make your complaint plainly and openly in the right spirit to the proper ones. Send in your petition for things to be adjusted and set in order, but do not withdraw from the work of God and prove what? Unfaithful because others are not doing right. Amen. What is... That's my sister right there. What she's saying, you do what's right because it's right. Don't worry. Pastors are corrupt. Leaders are corrupt. That may be. Complaints. Oh, they shouldn't have sold that ranch. They shouldn't have bought this. Oh, they shouldn't be doing this. And don't you, what does she say? You have a complaint? Take it in the right spirit. Make your complaint plainly and open to the proper ones. Yeah, 
Let your voice be heard in the right spirit, polite, but do not let the things that are going wrong stop you from what? From being faithful. From being faithful. And this widow, this widow reminds us that even though there is corruption sometimes in the church, she was faithful going to church. That's where she was. She was faithful in giving her offerings and giving her tithe. So how dare we hold back and withdraw for whatever reason? Or stop coming to church for whatever reason or whatever person? Regardless of the corrupt Pharisee or corrupt leaders, she continued going to church and continued giving. And continued giving. Why? Because when she joined the church, friends, when she joined the church, she didn't give her heart to the Pharisee. She didn't give her heart to the pastor, to the evangelist, to the conference. She gave her heart to Jesus. Amen. And that's why she continued giving. She heard the gossips and the bad news, but Sabbath after Sabbath, she continued to give and be faithful. What a lesson for us. What a lesson for me. Regardless of what we hear, even from upper departments, or the, regardless of what happens under the table amongst leaders, maybe it bothers us, we are called, like this widow, to be faithful. Jesus recognized her and wants us to, rec to remember that. And no wonder Jesus admired this widow because she showed his character, the character of God. He wanted his disciples and us to see and notice someone who portrayed his spirit and his character. Someone who gives all just like Jesus. Does this describe you and me? See, what motivates you to come or to give or to serve? When Christ hung on the cross, hanging on the cross, Christ came to a corrupt world, but he still came. Christ died for corrupt people, but he still died. He gave it all, even for those that were mocking him, beat him, spit in his face. And this widow showed that same spirit in giving all and still being faithful. Praise the Lord. Now there are people, there are people like this widow. There are. But if we're honest, most of us are not. And so that's why I appeal to you David's prayer there in Psalms 139 verse 23. What does Psalm 139, verse 23 say? Psalm 139, verse 33. That's not in your bulletin. I just added that this morning. Psalm 139, 23. It's an appeal that David is asking God. It's my appeal to you this morning to question your motivation and to pray to the Lord and say, Search me, O God, and know my heart. What are you asking God to do? Lord, really check my motivation. Really check my motives. Am I coming because I really love you? Or am I coming because they expect me there? Or because I like to be seen there? Or I like to see if that, if that person came back with that same dress. What is my motive? Search my heart and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the everlasting way, in the way everlasting. Friends, we are living in the last days. We are definitely living in the last days. Not because I say so, but because Scripture says so and points it out. And how you come to church 
how you give, how you serve, will determine whether you will remain in the church. Your motivation to come to church, to sing the hymns, to give, to serve, will make the difference whether you stay in the church or you leave the church. Because when the really hard times come, and the, and the real persecution begins. If your motivation was just coming because you like the building, you're out of here. If your motivation was because somebody else is in here in the church, and if they leave, then you're out of here. What is your motive? Search me, O oh God. And so I just appeal to you to humble yourself before God. Humble yourself before God and ask God to evaluate your motives. Evaluate your motives so that when God looks at us, He can see how we come to church, how we give, how we serve. God is not so much interested in what we give. but how we come, how we give. And Jesus saw, sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money. How is Jesus seeing you today? Only you can answer that between you and the Lord. Only I can answer that between me and God. Only my wife can answer that between her and God. It is a personal decision between you and God. What is your motivation? Friends, soon we don't know, but soon, as the end of times nears and nears closer to Jesus' second coming, we're not going to have a beautiful building to worship in. But we will still be worshiping. Amen. We may not have the structural system and be called Seventh-day Adventists, but there will still be people waiting for Jesus' advent, worshiping on the seventh day. Amen. Amen. What is your motivation? And I plead that you pray to God and ask God, search me, O God, and know my heart, try me. Humble yourself before God and have God evaluate and be honest with the Lord. And if He rebukes you, to take the rebuke and ask Him, Lord, change my motivation. Change my motivation. And you give your best to the Lord and do what is right because it is right. Because it is right. That's my prayer. And may the Holy Spirit bless you. May the Holy Spirit convict every single one of our hearts as the second coming draws closer and our motivations need to be placed in the right place. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord God Almighty, Thank you so much for your son that recognized this widow and that it was put in the scriptures twice for us to see that you do care that we do give, but more how we give, how we come. Lord, please check our attitudes, our motives, the spirits in which we come. And forgive us, forgive me if there's ever been a wrong motive a wrong reason. Help us to align our motives and our will according to you. To be humble to do that, Lord. Because at the end, we want to be with you. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. Bless your church. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I invite you to open your hymn books. As we sing our closing hymn, Give of Your Best to the Master, hymn number 572. 572. And let's, let's stand as we sing our closing hymn. Yeah. 
master. Give of the strength of your youth. Throw your soul's fresh glowing ardor into the battle for truth. Jesus has set the example. Dauntless was he young and brave. Give him your loyal devotion. Give him the best that you have. Give of the best to the master. Give of the strength of your youth. Glad in salvation's full armor. Join in the battle for truth. Give of the best to the master. Give him first place in your heart. Give him first place in your service. Consecrate every part. Given to you shall be given. God, his beloved Son, gave. Gratefully seeking to serve him. Give him the best that you have. Give of your best to the Master. Of the strength of your youth, clad in salvation's full armor, join in the battle for truth.